And we are now recording. Thank you and welcome to the iTero Element Digital Scanner Training three-part series. Tonight's session is session one, Introduction to, to the iTero Element, Back to Basics. It's being presented by our very own Kelly Bevington, Director of Intraoral Technology. And with that, I get to say, take it away, Kelly. Thanks so much, Jessica. I really appreciate it. Welcome to everybody. I'm so glad that you are here with us this evening. Uh, I appreciate you taking your valuable time and spending it with us for the next hour. So just to recap what our objectives are for this evening, um, everything is geared at the iTero element. It's for new users. It's referred to as back to basics. And then we'll progressively get more difficult with the information that we provide you. So for tonight, we're going to review foundations of isolation and gingival tissue management, as well as charting for a single crown and basic restorative scanning basics. I'm gonna start with a short PowerPoint, uh, just sort of welcoming you and introducing you to Dental Services Group, if you're not familiar with who we are. And then we will roll directly into demonstrating on the iTero element. So thank you very much. And as Jessica mentioned, if you have any questions that pop up, please feel free to ask as uh, they're fresh in your mind and go along. And I will do my uh, very best to keep an eye on the chat room. So first off, I just wanted to, again, welcome you to DSG. Uh, we really take the position that relationships matter and that you matter to us. Uh, that's part of the reason why we um, really not created, but um, elevated our educational programs with webinars um, over this past calendar year. For those of you that are not familiar with us, we are a national network of laboratories, approximately 40 across the United States. Uh, it's, it's hard to believe that we're scattered so far. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I had someone uh, just a couple hours ago text me about this particular program from Alaska of all places. I didn't even realize we have people in Alaska. So that's pretty neat. Uh, we are a full service dental laboratory. So what that means to us is we provide crowns, bridges, any type of fixed uh, work, veneers, uh, partials and dentures, as well as implants, orthodontic appliances and sleep appliances. We are proud to be able to provide um, high level technical support, whether it's someone um, such as myself or Marissa or Mark from our, our training team uh, for intraoral scanners to technicians that are at the bench and can go chair side and work with you on more challenging, difficult cases, or when it's just new to you, right? And help educate you and have, uh, have, it, have those types of procedures become part of your practice. Uh, education programs like we're doing today and practice development tools are all things that DSG can bring to you as a dentist. Uh, the Digital Experience Center is something that's unique to um, the dental lab industry. And for us, it is um, housed in Clearwater, Florida. And it, it's a completely model-free digital workflow. So from the iTero scanner or other scanners, we are able to um, within five days, provide that single unit restoration back to you. So if it comes in on a Monday morning, we can get it back to your practice uh, on Friday afternoon. Digital workflow, again, just that it, it's completely digitalized uh, workflow. And if, um, if you're interested in learning more about it or wanna make sure that it is included on your iTero scanner, the code for iTero is 2947. That is for the Digital Experience Center. And I'm just going to sort of get to it. So isolation. The really nice thing about the iTero scanner is it is designed with a, um, a larger, wider handpiece, the scanning wand itself, purposely in order to use that device to help retract the cheek and tongue. Uh, many people don't realize that, but sometimes the smaller the wand doesn't necessarily mean it's a, a better fit for your practice. So um, 
For brand new users, I do sometimes like to use an OptraGate or a Comfort View. It enables you to see a little better, especially when you're, you're scanning for the first few times. Um, or if you're fortunate enough to have an assistant while you're scanning, the ScanMate is um, non-reflective and autoclavable and very nice to uh, have as a secondary item to help retract that cheek or tongue versus a mirror. Isolation again, keeping the area dry. So um, against the tongue or be wedged between the tongue and the lingual surfaces of the teeth, a traditional, a traditional um, dry angle, cotton dry angle, no foil, no mirror to it, um, sort of folded in half, almost like a little taco, works very nicely to just keep the tongue away from the lingual surfaces enough for you to be able to capture them without picking up the tongue itself. And then against the parotid gland on the cheek, it's very nice to have a, a neo-dry absorbent um, dry angle. And what that helps do is especially when you're a, a new scanner, you have a tendency to perhaps pull on the cheek a little, a little more than you will as you become more proficient. And so every time you pull the patient's cheek, it has a tendency to milk that parotid gland. And then all of a sudden you have more and more saliva. So this absorbent, um, dry angle helps to collect that saliva for you. And then another basic item is I really encourage people to confirm their occlusal clearance or their, their reduction for their crown before scanning. I'll show you on the iTero, it has a wonderful feature to help um, cut away the occlusal surface if you need to reprep and rescan. Uh, however, I do, from a foundational standpoint, um, I like to, to correct the, the potential problem uh, before we even scan or take a physical impression. So prep check happens to be my favorite, but a, uh, a perioprobe, a bite tab, anything to confirm that you have that one to one and a half millimeters of reduction. So this is um, some screenshots from actual iTero scanners that I wanted to share with you of a scan that has an opportunity for improvement. So you'll notice here in red, that is where the laboratory has marked the margin, but you can also see the sort of white gray area here, here, and here are uh, areas that the data was not fully obtained. It wasn't fully collected. And in this particular section here, when you get to the monochromatic stone model, the, the margin itself really disappears. We're unable to see it in order to fabricate your crown. So this would be an example of, of a scan that could use improvement, a bad scan, right? And then we're gonna go to um, some textbook, wonderful uh, gingival tissue retraction. And this retraction um, happened to be um, obtained with cord, but uh, you know there, we'll address it. There's many ways to retract the tissue. The trick is to retract it both gingivally and apically. Another example of actual scan. So the top two images, this you can see is sort of under saliva, right? And then here where it's marked in red, you can tell that the margin was is impossible to find, right? Because it is underwater, it's under, under saliva. Whereas the secondary scan, very nice and dry, you can see the finish line of the prep 360 degrees. And then when you get to the monochromatic image, um, of the stone model, you can also see that it's nice and crisp and clear. And that's exactly what we're looking for. That's what we want to achieve. Another example of good tissue retraction for this bridge. And how do we achieve that? So there's, there's multiple ways to achieve it. Personally, I'm probably a little more old school and I grew up packing cords. So I am a registered dental assistant, EFTA and uh, practiced clinically in California and Connecticut for about 10 years before joining DSG. So um, I like a dual cord technique where I will place two cords. The first one will be a double or triple zero, followed by a separate second cord of a zero, number one, maybe even number two, it depends what the tissue can, can, uh, can hold, right? Um, the reason I like that, and then I'll have the patient bite into a copper cap for about two minutes. 
The reason I like that is then once I'm fully isolated and I'm ready to scan, I have the patient um, open, take the compra cat cap out, remove the top cord only, and just a little bit of air, right? And that usually does the trick. The first cord is still in place and it's helping to maintain those circular fluids from rising up, right? It, it helps to maintain the clot and maintains hemostasis. Now I realize that um, cord isn't for everybody and I can appreciate that. Oh, and these are just some examples of materials that I've used. I, I have no affiliation with any dental company out there. These are just items that I've personally used that I found worked well in my hands. So um, Viscostat happens to be one of my favorite uh, hemostat hemostatic agents, has a really nice little sponge tip on the end of the applicator that you can rub into the gingival tissue, almost burnish it into the tissue, and it really helps to uh, stop the bleeding. The, um, my second favorite would be retraction paste. And I think it's really important for, um, for the dentist and dental assistants to realize that retraction paste is more than a hemostatic agent. Um, it, I see a hand is raised. Excuse me one moment. I wanna make sure everybody can hear. Maybe I can see it, maybe I can't. They can one moment and I'm not seeing the hand back up. It might've been an okay. accidental. Maybe it was an error. Oh, no worries. Uh, so hemostatic agents, or, or I'm sorry, retraction paste. So the retraction paste is more than a hemostatic agent. Many people will just um, apply the retraction paste on, on top of the, the tissue itself. And although that helps to stop the bleeding, it doesn't do anything for gingival retraction. What really needs to occur is the tip of the applicator here, the tip of the applicator needs to go down into the sulcus as you're expressing the retraction paste. And that allows you to, um, for the retraction paste to work and create that lateral and apical uh, retraction of the gingival tissue, really, really important. So there's lots of different paste out there on the market. Uh, 3M probably has my favorite tip. It's called the 3M retraction paste. It's very, very fine, like a little hummingbird tip. Um, however, it's really hard to express it out of the tube, out of the carpule, and I know a lot of assistants struggle with that. Whereas the Premier Traxident brand is, is sort of more middle of the road. The tip isn't as fine, um, but it's easier to express the material out of the syringe, uh, therefore maybe a little, little more compliant for people to use. And then in addition to that, I do like to use a compra cap. So what people will ask me, well, does this work? Does that work? So I, I just have a, a couple items and this is part of your handout that you will get as well, but uh, laser works well if, it, if it's a nice clean cut of the tissue. If there's a lot of debris, it, not so much. Uh, rotary curatage, the same thing. Sometimes it, it's very choppy. It's difficult to get the light up over these little mountains of tissue tags that we see. And it, same thing with electrosurge. So not, not as fond of those, um, those ways of trying to create hemost hemostasis and um, expose the margin. And then just the DSG really, we're, we're all about communication, right? So we're gonna go over communication opportunities on the scanner itself and where there is a note section on the RX. But even prior to that, uh, we have uh, something that we refer to as our doctor's uh, personal profiles. So during an onboarding session, when you join DSG, when you send your first uh, case to us, we will go through your likes and dislikes and, and really what your preferences are. And then we also have something called a new night leave case digest that allows you to know when your case is being shipped to you. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and connect to the scanner. I'm already connected via uh, team viewer. Stop. Okay, I'm going to share again.
Great. Now, can everybody see the iTero scanner? Not yet. Not yet. While we're waiting, um, um, I, I'm seeing a couple duplicate names. Just want to double check um, if you've let somebody else use your unique login. If you could please log off, register, and log back in. If you need a CE certificate, CE certificates are auto-populated based on your attendance records. So thank you so much. And yes, we can see the scanner. Awesome. Terrific. Thanks. Okay, great. So here is the scanner and it is behind me. So I'm going to do a couple demonstration scans. And I'm going to be reviewing two different workflows tonight. Uh, one is going to uh, be a, a straightforward, um, the most simple and concise way to scan for a single unit crown. And then the second is going to incorporate a pretreatment scan that uh, allows a slightly different workflow depending upon how your practice is set up and who will be doing the majority of the scanning. Okay, so uh, one thing that I wanted to address with you is let me let me go to the back here. Uh, the first thing I wanted to let you know is there is a green question mark in the upper right hand corner of your iTero scanner. Whereas if you tap on it, you will see a headset. If you tap on that headset, it brings up an application called Team Viewer, and that is a platform that myself or several other um, iTero trainers at uh, DSG can remotely access into your personal scanner and help you, right? So uh, maybe it's assessing a scan that you conducted earlier in the day. Maybe you have a patient in the chair and you would like us to take a look at something that you're seeing or that you're scanning. We're more than happy to um, help you along those lines. It's a unique feature to the iTero scanner. I also wanted to show you the education cap. And under the education cap is your learning center. Your learning center has an unbelievable amount of um, data and information here, but specifically the video library, I'm a visual learner. So I like to watch videos and learn from the videos. And you can see there's a multitude of different items up here that you are able to access and review either from the scanner itself or um, potentially from your My iTero account from any desktop that you have. And lastly, I wanted to show you the settings. That is the, the wheel or the cog up at the top by the question mark. And the settings allow you to um, connect to Wi-Fi, to uh, confirm your time zone. It allows you to sync configuration. So sync configuration is a good one when there are updates periodically or perhaps you add a new lab to your iTero. I get the call frequently that they've, um, you know, the office is called iTero. They've provided them a, a DSG lab code to upload it, to add it to the scanner, but it still isn't there. And you need to go in and sync configurations to allow that to show up on your RX itself. And then there's something called scan settings. The scan settings allows you to set your orientation as to where you're going to be positioned compared to the patient. So typically with iTero, the recommendation is to sit at a 12 o'clock position directly behind the patient um, and to scan the prep first. That, that's your, your, your most common uh, workflow with the iTero scanner. Not to say that you can't change it, you can, but this is where, where it would happen. Terrific. So now we are going to load a new patient. And before I do that, I see, I see there's a couple chats going on here. And I just want to see if there's any questions. Oh, I think that was from you. Jessica. That was from me. Yes. Sorry, Kelly. I will definitely let you know if I see questions pop up. Okay, great. So from here, we're going to uh, add a new patient. So it's going to be a new scan. And the plus sign allows you to add a patient. 
the the um, magnifying glass would allow you to search your patient base. Okay, so think of the iTero is becoming your electronic um, charting system for any of your patients that have been scanned in the past. So I'm going to go to the plus sign and I'm adding in the patient name. and the word add, at which time I'm gonna select what type of a case it is. For tonight's demonstration, I'm gonna select restorative. And then I'm gonna choose a lab. And the lab I'm going to choose is going to be DSG Group Practice Solutions. I can put in my request date. It auto-populates a request date, but that doesn't mean that you can't change it, okay? And my uh, tooth this evening, that is prepped happens to be number 30, and it's going to be for a crown. At which time now it's going to ask you about your material selections, what your preparation design is going to be, and the shade. So sometimes you don't know this information ahead of time, and, and that's fine, but if you can, go ahead and put it in first. So this is going to be a full contour zirconia as a shoulder, and my body is going to be a two with a gingival A3. I'm going to scroll up. And how I'm scrolling is by placing my finger on the screen and going up and down. Oftentimes people miss this note section on the bottom because they didn't scroll up and know that it was there. The other thing I want you to see is under the treatment information. Under treatment information is a synopsis of what you just typed into the prescription itself. And that is what the laboratory will receive as far as information about the scan itself. Here in the notes, you can input really any, anything that you want to, but let's uh, just say you want uh, broad, tight, interproximal contacts. Great. So from here, we're going to actually scan number 30. And to do that, we're gonna go back up to the top and tap on the scanner icon. I do wanna show you something with the um, scanner itself. And I know it might be difficult to see on the camera, but it will demonstrate on the screen. So you know that, um, or maybe you don't, but the, the iTero has a sleeve that goes over top of the, scanner and you press it on. Now, sometimes people don't press it on hard enough and you'll see at the top of the screen how there's a white bar, right? So if I take it inter interorally, and can you see that white bar at the top of the image right below the words tooth number 30? If we scanned it like this, this data would be um, inaccurate because the sleeve itself is not on the whole way. It needs to be pushed in with uh, uh, a little bit firmly and then the, the white bar went away and you're going to be able to conduct a nice clean scan. So we're going to start by scanning tooth number 30 and I'm holding the wand um, in my palm sort of underhand and I'm positioned at a 12 o'clock position to the patient. I'm I'm scanning the prep tooth first, and I'm going to line up those crosshairs right over top of the prep. I'm pushing the button, which initiates scanning, and I'm going to roll to the lingual, and then I'm going to roll to the buckle. Coming right back to the occlusal and stopping. Your, your prep scan should never take more than eight to 10 seconds at the most. You want it nice and clean and clear. Everything has been isolated. The gingival tissue looked great. And we are going to take this green dot. Can you see the green dot here? And we're gonna place it dead center over the occlusal of number 30. At which time we move on to scanning the rest of the lower teeth. And we're gonna do a, a quadrant for this scan. 
So I'm going to start on whatever is the most uh, terminal molar or distal tooth in that quadrant. And this happens to be number 31. So I'm going to start scanning on 31. And I'm going to scan all the occlusals coming into the lingual, rolling to the buckle. And as I'm on the buckle, I'm making sure that I'm capturing a good two to four millimeters of soft tissue. And why that's important is for our bite registration. Uh, that will be important for the capture and merging of the maxillary and mandibular scans. So now I'm going to come up and I'm going to look at my scan. And I'm purposely going to show you where the mesial wall of 31, that contact needs to be acquired as does the distal of 29. And so how we do that is um, with a specific tool, it's called the fill tool, F-I-L-L. -L. I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, iTero is the only scanner I'm aware of that has uh, such a feature. And how you use it is you push on the screen itself, you'll see that a menu comes up, you're going to select the word, you're gonna select the word fill, and you will see that those areas are now encircled in red. So you can go right back in and scan right on those areas of red. They will turn tooth colored as they are picked up and obtained. And you're done. What's wonderful about this tool is that you did not jeopardize the, the condition of the prep scan that you already acquired. So it was saved and it was maintained. And now uh, you just added some additional data to it without over scanning. One of the biggest problems um, or concerns, challenges that people have when they're new to scanning is they tend to scan multiple layers of data and they scan over and over and over again in a certain section and it, um, it, it contaminates the, the scan. It just, it makes it inaccurate. So uh, the fill tool is great. It allows you to just pinpoint a couple areas of information that you need, and then you can move on successfully. So now we are going to shift to the upper arch. I'm gonna tap on the upper arch. And so when you're on the lower, you can either physically move to the upper arch or you can tap the arrow to the right and it will go there for you. Again, mirroring what we already um, acquired on the lower. So I'm going to start on the second molar on the upper, on the occlusal. And it's always occlusal, lingual, buccal, or in this case, palatal. All right. Rolling over to the buccal. capturing that two to four millimeters of soft tissue and stopping. Terrific, so now we are going to shift to the bite registration. The bite registration is going to be like a wave, if you will. Um, patient's mouth is going to be open. I'm going to insert the wand, retract the cheek, have the patient close. And then it's a bit of a wave between the upper and lower teeth. And there's our bite registration. So now we're going to go to post-processing. And the post-processing takes a moment or two. Um, a couple things I wanna show you from the post-processing page, and this is a, a relatively new, newer feature, and that is the time clock in the upper right-hand corner. Excuse me, you can see the scan time, and, the, and this is talking, right? So it, it typically is gonna be under five minutes is my experience. Um, but what's nice about that is it enables you to clearly identify how long it takes 
to scan in your particular practice. Um, and why is that important? It, it's important for a couple reasons. One is um, chair time, whether it be what's booked for the doctor or for the assistant, um, it, it shows you real time how much time is really used with that scanner. And if you're sharing the scanner between multiple operatories, it gives you a mental idea as to how long that um, team member will need the scanner before it's available to move on. Kelly, okay. yes, we've got a question. Somebody's asking, yes. what did you push to get to the post-processing? What I pushed was um, the image to the right of the scanner sleeve that looks like a magnifying glass over some lower centrals. It's, high, it's currently highlighted in blue at the top of the screen. And then that post processes all the images together, allowing us to get to the occlusal clearance view. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. So this is our occlusal uh, clearance or, you know, we're going to check our reduction at this point. Um, so there's a scale here. The scale is um, set at 1.1 1, 1 .1 to 2.3. It's going to vary on your material that you selected from your RX as well. And one thing that we can check, so here it looks like it's good, right? But let's say this was all red and that you wanted to correct that and Reprep the tooth. Okay, you've realized, oh my goodness, I thought I had enough reduction, but I really don't. I, I want to, you know, do the best job I can here, and I want to reprep just the occlusal surface. The, the margins looked great, everything else looked great, but we want to do some adjustment there. So notice how I took the image. Actually, I'm going to go back and move it just a little bit more. So you can see how you can turn the image. I really want it so it's very sideways, right? And I won't accidentally take off too much from the prep. So I'm gonna to go to the eraser tool and I'm going to take a section of that off. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm going to rescan. Can you see the red circle at the top? So that's the data that I have taken away because doctor has now reprepped the tooth. And now I'm going to rescan just the occlusal of that prep. Kelly, we have another question. Somebody's yeah. curious, how do you sterilize the scanner? Yeah, so the, the scanner itself has disposable sleeves, that white sleeve that I showed you um, in the very beginning. And then it has a blue sleeve that you will put on between patients. But the rest of the scanner is going to be um, disinfected with uh, Optum wipes or Cavicide AF wipes. And in each box of scanner sleeves is in a very small plastic bag is a tiny little lens cloth. It almost looks like a piece of gauze um, or like a dryer sheet, but it, it's real small in the box. And that is what is used. I don't wanna take this off cause I'll blind you. But if there is a piece of glass lens under the sleeve, and that is the only thing that you should ever use to clean the lens, all right, is this little cloth that is inside the scanner sleeve box. And that's sort of a, a hidden secret people don't, don't um, tend to know about. I'm not sure why, but okay. So here we have scanned the occlusal surface and we are gonna post-process again. So how do we get to that? It is the image to the right of the um, scanner image, uh, uh, you know, handpiece, the wand. And so it's performing post-processing, which means that it's merging that new data with the old data. Okay, great. So now here we are, we can see it, we like it. We, we know that, um, that it was successfully um, rescanned. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, dyes, right? The actual dye itself. And I'm gonna go to this image and sort of shift it a little bit. I'm gonna reposition it here. 
I'm going to this image, you can see where the yellow is, right? So the gold or the yellow represents to the laboratory the dye, the dye itself that the crown will be fabricated upon. And how that was um, distinguished was from the green dot uh, after you scanned with the crosshairs, the prep itself, we selected the green dot and put it right on the occlusal surface. So that's where this comes from. But I'm gonna sort of play devil's advocate and, and mess that up a little bit, right? So if I take a chunk of this out, right? And now you can see that the dye, which is yellow, um, has been compromised, right? Like that green dot wasn't put perfectly in the center of the occlusal surface. How you would correct that is to go to the plus sign and it allows you to come in interproximally and make sure, let me do a big circle here, make sure that you have all of that data. So you can play with that a little bit, but you always wanna make sure that you can see the finish line of your preparation 360 degrees in the gold at, at this section, okay? And then um, the last thing that you would check at this time is potentially the margin itself. And how you would do that is the image to the far left-hand corner at the bottom. You're gonna tap directly on it and it is automatically going to provide uh, margin marking to your die. Kelly, we have a question. How do you bring yes. up the die? How do you what it? How do you bring up the die? Yeah. So let me let me finish the margin marking and then I'll go backwards and, and show you that section. So this is the computer software has automatically marked your margin. All right. But let's say there's um, you had a little bifurcation or, or something was a little off that the computer software didn't read appropriately. You personally can alter that by tapping on one of those little green dots and moving that, right? Like, woo, like you could really move it substantially um, as needed. I will tell you it's very, um, not very often that doctors utilize this tool. I, I don't know if they're not fully aware that it's functioning um, or they're just choosing not to do it. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, the lab is, is really uh, the ones who are the experts at marking the margins, but it's nice to know that that feature exists um, in the event we need that. Okay, so the question was, how do I bring up the die? So I'm gonna go back to Usually I'm gonna do post-processing again. Okay, so if I'm back at the scan itself and I tap on the tooth, the prep tooth that we had, here is the image. There is one aspect of, of being able to see the prep tooth. If I come up here to the post-processing, and unfortunately, it's going to have to process again. That's where I can go to the monochromatic stone image of the dye itself. And I'm going to come over here to the uh, far left. So now it's the stone image. And then I'm going to go directly below the eraser, the picture of the eraser. And this is where it shows up in yellow for you, in gold, for you to confirm um, that, that you've been able to see all the margins at that point. Sorry. To move it, you need to be off that screen, right? So this is a better view for you straight from the occlusal. Did that answer your question on the die? While we're waiting on them to yeah. confirm, we've got another one. Somebody's asking when cutting off the prep, the prep to rescan, yes. do I need to select the die or the whole arch? You will select the tooth. 
Great. You will no, select wait. it. We did get a confirmation that the question on how to bring up the die, they're, they're good to go. So Excellent. I'll just wait for um, the question on cutting off the prep scan to make sure that um, that they're uh, satisfied too. Sure. So if you're if you're back to your, we call it a rainbow wheel, you know, your your color for your occlusal clearance, because that's where you would really identify if you needed to reprep the occlusal. And if, if there was a big section of red, that would be your, your indicator, or, or perhaps you need to really go back and reevaluate your bite registration. Did you take an accurate bite registration in the first place? And what I mean by that is if I go back to the bite registration, you know, we're all accustomed to looking from the buckle view of our bite registration, right? But oftentimes there's great value in flipping it to the lingual, to the tongue side. You know, we don't have the ability to sit on their tongue ordinarily and look at the image from the tongue side, but digitally you can. And you can often see where the patient has opened just ever so slightly and, um, and the bite registration was off. Um, so it, it's very easy to go back and retake the bite registration if you wanted to come back to the bite um, we can, you know, re rescan it at that point as well. Any other questions from this before I go into the second workflow, which incorporates um, pretreatment? Yes, please. We have one that popped in. What is the typical occlusal clearance scale set at? Yeah, so it really it depends a little bit upon your material selection. So full contour zirconia a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Um, the lab is always going to want a little, a little more reduction in order to build a more aesthetic restoration. So the more space the lab has, the more aesthetically pleasing they can create layers of porcelain to mimic the natural dentition. Um, gold, for instance, I know nobody does gold anymore, um, but gold, for instance, it is even smaller. You can do less than a millimeter in gold because it's so, it's so thin, uh, you don't need that additional space. Um, probably a good two to two and a half even millimeters for porcelain fused to metal because not only do you have um, the depth of the metal coping, but then you're going to have to opaque that metal coping and stack porcelain on top of it. And in your handout, there is a section, a guide uh, that has some of the information on the isolation and gingival tissue retraction that also includes some basic requirements for PFMs as well as full contour zirconia. And just in case you did not receive that email, it is coming from education at dentalservices.net. We also resend all handouts in a follow-up email about 48 hours after the webinar. But Kelly, we do have another question. It's yeah. a little lengthy, so bear with me. Sure. Uh, can you show again how you selected the area to rescan the occlusal after adjusting occlusal clearance? We, yes. uh, they cannot see where you're clicking with your finger. Could you please show the cursor or tell them? Yes. yes. Okay, so to, let me go back to the operative arch, the operative quadrant, right? So you can see the color mapping on the teeth. I'm going to slide it so that I'm looking at it completely from the buckle. And then I'm going to go to the far left hand image. Could you see that? We can see it flipping around. Um, it says the other, um, well, to advise the audience up in your right upper right hand Let's side, see. you can click on Let me see if I view. can move my cursor yeah. on my computer. No, there we it go. Disappears. Oh, it doesn't come over the screen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can see the cursor right now in the black, but it's yes, directly to the right of that. No. Okay. Beautiful. Great. Um, and then, so from there, you would take your eraser tool and you can cut off the top of it. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to go to the second workflow now. 
And we have another question. I'm so yes. sorry. Uh, oh, is, there, is there any software with the iTero that picks the shade from the teeth surrounding since you're there taking an intraoral? Okay. To the best of mine, I, I, so I don't work for Align Technologies and I, I don't have all the inside secrets, but at this point in time, I do not believe there is um, the ability to select shade with the iTero. I know the uh, Element 5D just came out with the caries detection. I, I don't believe you can um, uh, match a shade with the 5D. And I, I apologize if I'm misspeaking on that. Thank you. Sure, sure. Okay, so the second workflow is I am going to go, I'm going to leave this and I'm going to open a new scan. And I'm going to enter in a new patient. And I'm going to add the patient. So from here, uh, the case type is going to still be restorative. And the laboratory is going to be DSG Dresch. And here's the difference. So um, Directly above tooth number one, you will see a little square with words to the right that says pre-treatment scan. And we're going to select the pre-treatment scan. So we're going to tap on that box. So now it is activated. And what that does is it allows or adds one more page to the workflow. So instead of having just the operative opposing and bite registration. Now we're going to have the maxillary mandibular bite registration. And in addition to that, we're going to add the operative quadrant. Okay. So uh, tooth number 30 is still going to be my, my crown prep. I'm going to keep it simple and we'll keep it zirconia. I'm going to be respectful of everybody's time here. Confirming that what I see under treatment information is accurate. And this case is strange, so I'm going to tell the lab to call me. And now I am going to go to scanning. So now when I go to scanning, you're going to see a one and a two over top of the arches themselves. So to the left, you're going to see number one, and then to the right, you're going to see number two. Okay, so that's our biggest difference right now. So right now, I'm going to scan the mandibular quadrant, and I'm starting on number 31. And why I really like this workflow is all three of these scans, the mandibular, maxillary, and bite registration can be done by the assistant before the patient was ever anesthetized, right? Or maybe the dentist comes in, you know, reviews with the patient what the treatment plan is for the day. Um, it, the prep is on number 31, so doctor anesthetizes 31, and the assistant starts scanning immediately. So you're, you're getting those scans in before the patient is fully numb, uh, and I, I really believe that you get a much more accurate bite registration when the patient is sitting up at like a 90 degree angle and without being anesthetized. Uh, just from personal experience of conducting hundreds of chair side live uh, intraoral scanner trainings with doctors and patients. So we've done our mandibular quadrant. We're going to go to the maxillary arch. Same thing, we're mirroring the lower. So we're starting on the occlusal. And remember with um, iTero, it's always occlusal lingual and buccal.
And we have a question while you're scanning, Kelly. Uh, somebody was under the impression that a pretex scan, P R E T X, was to capture the anatomy of the existing tooth. Correct. Great, thank you. Oh, oh, they said, oh, okay. And then uh, somebody commented, you cannot select shades on the Element 5D. The, I'm sorry, the last thing? Um, that you are not able to select uh, shades on the Element 5D. You are not. I didn't think so, but I, I, I wasn't sure. I'm sorry, this is sort of humming, so it's hard to hear you. Um, I, I'm sorry. So if, if I left that out, what, what is a reason why you would do the pretreatment scan? There's two different reasons. One, three different reasons, really. One is to duplicate the anatomy of the existing dentition. So if you have a, a fairly healthy um, tooth that you're going to be prepping, um, you would want to scan that anatomy. It gives the laboratory a a basic idea as to what that natural tooth looked like, right? Maybe there's a cusp broke off and that's why you're doing the crown, but it gives you some general idea. Um, another reason would be if it's a tooth that is underneath a partial, you could scan the tooth as the pretreatment, like we just did here on the lower. Um, or the third reason would be to use it as an opportunity to scan for the emergence profile when working on implant cases. And that, uh, I think implants we address in the third session of this series. Okay, so we have um, the first mandibular scan, we have the maxillary scan, we're going to do the bite registration. so we can confirm that we have that. And now we're going to shift. So, so now we've scanned, right? Doctor comes in, preps the tooth, and now we're gonna scan the prep itself. We're back to those green crosshairs again, where we're right over the occlusal surface of the prep. Occlusal lingual and buckle back to the occlusal and stopping right and this is where we're going to review make sure we have our margins 360 degrees take that green dot and it's right in the center of the prep itself and now we're going to continue scanning that quadrant that operative quadrant or segment you know, everything's identified as a segment on the iTero scanner. We have a couple more questions coming yeah. in. Someone's asking, how do you scan for a rest seat? There are, um, there are many different opinions as to the best way to do that. Um, even amongst our different DSG labs, some people have greater success with one way versus another. Um, but, but more often than not, the greatest success we've experienced is by scanning the tooth that the partials, um, the, the male, right, of the partial clasp or rest seat is going to fit into of the female of the crown. So whatever that existing crown is, you want to scan to if you're extra, you know, if you're, if you're, yeah, that that's the best I can explain it. Sorry, and that's probably my weakest link um, or this, all of the scanners weakest link there. Well, they said, thank you. We've got another one. Can the assistant yeah. scan the prepped tooth? Yeah, that's a great question. And I'll just share again, I'm gonna be respectful of time here. I'll share a quick story. So I had, um, you know, five, six, seven years ago when I started training, um, I received this question frequently from across the country. And I would reach out to the State Board of Dentistry in the different states to try to identify if the assistant could scan the prep or not. 
And it, it was really, really challenging to get any kind of answer from the Board of Dentistry. So um, as the dentists are the practice owners, I, I leave that decision up to the dentists themselves. The language that they use is reversible or irreversible impressions. So if you, if you philosophically, you could say it's a picture, it's an image, you hit delete, it's, re it's reversible. Um, but that's, that's up to the dentist and the practice owner to make that decision. And your comfort level and training as to whomsoever it is that's scanning. Thank you, Kelly. And uh, we have another one. How do you get rid of a bad bite registration? A bad bite registration. All right, let me, let me see if I can go back to this bite registration. So here's a, a bite registration and let's say it's bad. You're going to hold your finger down on the screen and the very top word says segment with an X and a trash can. So I'm gonna tap on that. It says deleting scans from the bite. Are you sure, right? It's always gonna ask you for a confirmation. You could hit yes. So you're starting back with the upper and lower scan or uh, I'm sorry, yeah, upper and lower um, scans. And then you can go right back in and take another bite registration. Great. What else do we have? That's it for right now. And in case anybody's holding back, I did repost Kelly's contact information in the chat box. She is Thanks, ready, Jessica. willing, and welcome to take your questions. Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you everybody for, you know, sticking out the entire hour. Uh, I look forward to doing the second session. Um, if there's something specific you want to learn about, feel free to contact me directly or to respond with your registration and uh, let us know what, what you're eager to learn about. Thank you, Kelly. And we did also post Thanks. in the chat box the registration link to the next two sessions. We do truly hope that you're going to learn with us then. Oh, I um, think we had some um, polling questions too. If you're able to stay on, I think there's four or five questions. It just it helps me as preparing content for the next um, sessions to understand clearly um, who the audience is and what what they already know and what they would like to learn more of. I just launched the first one, um, but in preparation, we still have another question that popped in. Could yeah. you please show one more time the yeah. occlusion cleanup to retake after adjusting? Yes. And I will close this poll out in 30 seconds. So that way everybody can see the screen in full in three, two, one. While you're loading that up, Kelly, uh, you have a 73% audience ratio that currently have an iTero scanner. Oh, that's great. That's great. Okay. I'm going to go back to the first example I did. Do not want to do. So I'm going to go to orders. And orders is where you can find all of the scans um, that you have taken. And I'm gonna view the scans. Okay, so here we are at the occlusal clearance, right? And I am going to go to the eraser and I'm holding on the screen as I'm making a circle around the occlusal section, which removes some of the data. I go back to scanning Go back to scanning the prep itself. 
You can see the red circle. Oh, can they see the screen now? Because the polling question is up. Um, yes, it's uh, my apologies. I don't have it up. Okay. Uh, it's somebody on said perfect. Screen, so if I'm sharing my screen. I don't want, I want them to be able to see it. There you go. Um, so the red circle with the blue and the occlusal is where I just erased, right? So it sort of looks like the fill tool because it is encircled with the red. And now I am going to scan just over that occlusal surface. And it filled in very quickly. And then I would post process again. And that's going to merge the new scan with the rest of the data that's already there. Great, thank you. I'm gonna now allow uh, Dr. James, um, I'm asking you to unmute. You have your hand raised to um, ask a question. Dr. James, I believe you pronounce your last name, uh, no, no. Martiniak. No, no. Uh, while we're waiting, uh, we have another Please question. Are these features the same for iTero one and two? Um, pretty much they are actually, um, I have the iTero one, I have the iTero element one here. Um, so they recently did a software upgrade that, that I believe mirrors the one and two pretty much, pretty much the whole way. Um, one of the biggest differences is the wand positioning is in the center of the scanner instead of off to the side and it's a little lighter the wand itself is a, a little lighter and a little smaller but the software i'm i'm pretty sure it's you know 99 percent the same great thank you i'm sure. going to uh, launch the second polling question while we're waiting to see if anybody else has any other questions for you? Great. And we're polling, we're getting questions. Just a reminder for everybody, um, the way AGD guidelines are is that you need to be the registered person to register your credential information as well as log in and attend. We do have a um, computer automated connection for our CE certificates. So they're automatically created with that registration information. And that is how they are emailed directly to you. So uh, thank you for registering for yourself and <laughs> with complete information because that helps us keep records. Uh, we're about 50 seconds in, so I'll end this polling and share results. So what do you utilize your scanner for? 64% crown and bridges. 30% Invisalign and orthodontics, 2% for implants, partials, and sleep. Well, I'll let, I'll let everybody in on a little, little secret maybe. Um, just, you know, just this month, uh, iTero Align Technologies launched a new module specific for scanning edentulously. And so there is in your videos, there, there should be one you might need to sync it to uh, have the new videos come up, but there is one specific to dentures that our team is gonna be doing training on next week to learn more about it. We're super, super excited to, to you know, have a, a digital solution for dentures really could be huge. Thank you, Kelly. It looks like we've gotten some more questions. Um, yeah. Oh, they needed an all of the above for the last poll. <laughs> um, we uh, use yeah. our... so, uh, I should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> That's always good news to hear. Yeah. Uh, we use another one. We use our scanner for multiple purposes. And somebody said, awesome. Uh, wonderful. That's Thank great. you. I mean, the best, the best case scenario is scanning every patient. I'm such a firm believer of uh, whether it, it's an assistant with part of new patient or hygiene scheduling um, annually. I just, I think it's such a, a great education tool for the patient. It engages them in their uh, decision-making process on their dentistry. And it gives us an opportunity as um, dental 
clinical uh, associates to to speak more clearly and show patients what's really going on um, with their oral health. It's, it's a great, great process. Great, thank you. I'm gonna end this next poll. There, there's still more flying in, but uh, just to be kept with time. So what are your greatest challenges? 13% clear crown prep images, 16% accurate bite registrations, climbing to 32% for isolation and 39% say gingival tissue retraction. Yeah, very interesting. That, that's great for us to know. Sometimes I think I'm, I harp on it um, too much, but I know as a dental assistant, that was one of my greatest challenges was consistent, um, good hemostasis and uh, tissue retraction. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Somebody's commenting. They just got their scanner yesterday, so I hope to use it for almost everything possible. <laughs> uh, we have a, so another question. What screen do we view before sending to the lab and make sure it will not get rejected by the lab? <laughs> well, the screen you review to make sure it doesn't get rejected is really all of the screens, right? So you want to make sure... Um, it's at the post-processing, and I'm going to minimize this poll. It's at the post-processing part that you want to make sure that you're really looking at the high-resolution image of the prep itself, but you want to pay attention to that occlusal clearance as well. And then when you're sending it to the lab, that is the envelope, and this automatically comes up with your signature that you would hit confirm and send, which I'm, I'm not going to do at this point because the, the lab will be wondering what on earth I am doing, sending all these crazy cases tonight. But I hope that answered your question. Um, while we're waiting for them to respond, I will launch the next poll. Oh, they said yes. And is okay. Thank you to the person who said that DSG is your most favorite lab. Um, oh, they commented, awesome. our work is excellent. And now the short return time is amazing. We appreciate that's wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Yep. Um, oh, there's another one in QA. Oh, somebody gave you a great job, Kelly. Yes, you do thank do you. a fabulous thank you, thank job. You. We love your training. I'm going to quickly end the poll just to be mindful of time and Great. sharing results. You've got 28% that want to hear from you, 36 and maybe 36% no. We hope the no is because you you are in the no and got all the training you needed. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, one last shout out, last call for any other questions. No, I'm seeing more great presentations. Thank you, Kelly. We thank you audience for learning with us today. Is there anything else you wanna close out with Kelly? You know, I'm, I'm gonna close out with another, um, you know, just another thank you and a shout out to all of you. If it, if it weren't for individuals that are craving education and knowledge and wanting to learn about digital and getting out of your comfort zone and, and getting into digital impressions, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing and I love it. Uh, I, I miss working with patients right now with the whole COVID thing, but we, we hope to be back in operatories working side by side with you again shortly. And uh, just thank you. Thank you for everything. Really appreciate it. And look okay. forward to seeing you next week. We have one more person just in case they, I'm gonna unclick you, uh, Dr. Jeremiah uh, asking you, to, there we go. Hello. Hello. Oh, we can hear you. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm a dental assistant, uh, but I yes. wanted to ask, uh, I had, I ran into, I guess, sort of an issue as far as um, we were doing a crown and I needed, the lab wanted me to have the required scans, which is the upper, lower, the bite and the prep, but they yes. also needed another one with the partial in. And so since it only allows you to scan about four, which is the upper, lower, the bite, and the prep, 
how would you submit that last one? Would you submit another prescription just with no, that? No, I, I would have selected the pretreatment okay. and done the partial in place as the pretreatment in that particular case, based on what your lab was asking you for. So with the, I already submitted a pretreatment with trying to get them to, I guess, I guess calculate the size of the crown to hopefully make it the exact same size. I okay, just, was, the, was the partial in place for that one? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, it's, it is most ideal for all of the scans to be on the same prescription. You, okay. you would think that because it's a digital file, you could easily sort of mix and match them between submitted cases, but it really, right. it really is not that easy um, on the receiving end of the dental technicians that are working with those files. Got you. So just one last thing, just to make sure I understand. So if I run into that, should my doctor prep the tooth and then take a pretreatment scan of the partial end with the prep or just before he does anything with the partial end, they'll be able before to do Before he does anything with the partial end. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank Great. you. You're welcome. Thank you. What else do we have? It's gotten quiet. So uh, we're hitting 944 Eastern Standard Time. Um, please. Oh gosh, you guys are awesome. You stayed an extra 15 minutes. That's fantastic. They Thank did. You. And please, if you have a burning question in your mind and don't want to reach out, we encourage you to contact Kelly 724-244-9494. Nine, nine. We've also posted up the link to register for the next session, come bringing to you Wednesday, January 27th at 8.30 Eastern. It's going to cover session two, iTero Element, taking your skills to the next level. Uh, with that, we're getting thank you. So Kelly, I think it's time to say adieu. It's time to say good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica, for running through everything. I so appreciate it. Appreciate your skills. We appreciate you and all your knowledge, all right. Kelly. You bring Thanks. a wealth to this Have industry. A great night. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.